Welcome back to Insurance Influencers. I got a good one today. I got my good buddy, Mr. Eric Fierro, the Medicare boss, founder of Medicare Sales University, runs a Medicare call center out of Phoenix that is doing some serious freaking business, man. Welcome, bro. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Cody. It's a real pleasure. Dude, you're, uh, you've got a Hispanic background, right? Yes. Well, I am Hispanic. Heritage. Yeah, yeah. Heritage. Yeah. Uh, so so sh should it be Medicare Jefe? <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'll take either one, man. I'll take either one. <laughs> I love it, man. Dude, uh, t t t t t just tell us about yourself for a quick second, man. Yeah, uh, I've been in the business, uh, in the Medicare business since 2006 and fell in love with it. I've always been in search of something that I really felt I could help people and, and make great money along the way. And in that journey, I also found that I really, really enjoy not only helping seniors, but also helping agents. Uh, so I think you and I bond really well because we're both in that same wavelength where I love seeing agent growth. And then I get to experience that through not only the, the members of the university who are constantly working with me and I get to see their growth, but also in my own call center where I hire and employ agents and get to train them from the ground up to see their success within my own call center. So it's a lot of fun uh, on both aspects, but that's really my, my heart is in the, in the Medicare world, just because I think it's uh, such a great growth opportunity, a great place where you can feel good about what you're doing. And, uh, and it mixes well with everything. I just, I have, I have just a very fortunate position that I'm in where I just really enjoy what I'm doing in several avenues, all having to do with the Medicare insurance industry. Exactly. Dude. And I'm also, uh, for those that want to follow my good buddy on, uh, on Instagram, E Fierro Uno, baby. E Fierro One, E F I E R R O One. I'm tagging you in my Instagram story because that's what we do nowadays, right? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's Dude, it. there's a, this is a busy time, man. You're taking a bit time out of your schedule during AEP. It's, you know, uh, we're pre recording this before it, before it releases this Saturday. Um, it's October the 30th as of now. You're two weeks in. How, how's it been so far? It's been wild. It's been wild, you know, and, and here's, here's the reality is that in any, any situation where you're aiming for growth and you're aiming to do some big things, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be obstacles, you know, as well as I do, you live through it just like I do. And even though we don't necessarily always make it vocal, they're there. And so in the midst of those challenges, we have to bust through those walls and keep moving forward. And that's really what our AEP has been like so far in the beginning but uh, we're at a good place now where we're back to, I think, back on track. But even with that, we've uh, done really well as an agency. And I'm really excited to see what the rest of AEP is going to be like, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you said you guys have done like 700 policies uh, so yeah, far. Yeah, we're, we're approaching 700 policies so far. Um, and so, you know, and that's, that's what's having some hiccups going on. But we really, like I said, our, our agents are hard workers, man. These guys understand. And I think we make it real clear that this is a land grab. AEP is that time where you don't, you go into a different mindset, you know, where you have to understand this is the time where you just go hard. And that means work on Saturdays, work on Sundays if you want, but you have to really understand this is that period of time where people are actually willing to talk, yes. you know, throughout the rest of the year, it's a little harder to get them to have conversations with you, but this time of the year, they're ready. They want to talk. They want to hear from people. So Take advantage. That's what I always tell agents. Take advantage of this time, dude. It's time to flex on them, right? It's that. It's that. It's that time, bro. It's that time. I, I love it. Uh, you guys are on. You, you guys are on pace. I think we talked about. You probably sell around two thousand Medicare policies in like seven weeks, a hundred percent by phone. Yeah, which is very unique. It's 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 an area of our business that agents are always asking me about. Um, walk us through like. Walk us through a phone sale, man. Walk us through your your psychology of a phone sale, some setup, just some some tips and tricks from from the f phone sale side. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's really in the beginning, it's all about having to quickly start establishing that you are the expert and that the subject matter expert and that you're going to work at building rapport. I always tell my agents in phone sales because they can't see you, it is so important that they hear you, they hear your, I guess what I like to now call your, your cadence, right? Your voice cadence, uh, yeah. so that they feel what you're trying to express to them. They understand the emotion. I always tell the guys that 
people buy on emotion and then justify with logic. So yeah. you can't come at them from a purely educational standpoint and just word vomit on them and give them this whole shmeal about how the Medicare program works and expect they're going to be like, sign me up. It doesn't work that way. Yes. There has to be rapport building in the midst of all that. And so that's why it's important when you get them on the line, immediately asking open-ended questions is one of the biggest things. Mm. And so you have two different, two different avenues that you can go. Some agents love being scripted and some agents want to just have more bullet points and then make sure they hit those bullet points and then inject their own personality. And both ways work. That's the thing. Uh, and both ways are incredibly successful. We have guys who are 100% scripted every single time and they're writing 35, 40 apps a month. We have other guys that can write the same amount being unscripted and just hitting bullet points, you know, making sure they cover whatever they need to cover in the conversation. And so I think that if as long as in the midst of both avenues, you're trying to also build rapport and you're trying to get to know them better and you're trying to dig and figure out what's their pain point. Why is it that they want information? Why is it that they're unhappy with their existing plan, whether it be a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare supplement? Most times you'll find with MedSupps, they're unhappy because they're paying too much money. It's not because of the coverage. The coverage is phenomenal. They're just, they're unhappy because they're paying more money than they need to. And with the Medicare Advantage side, they may be unhappy because they actually had to use their Medicare Advantage plan in some type of, uh, you know, bad situation. They could have been diagnosed with COPD or they had to basically max out their, their Medicare Advantage plan and they see, oh my God, this cost me more money than I thought. And so now they're unhappy because of that situation and they're like, how do I get back to a Medicare supplement? But those are pain points and we can use those pain points because if we, if we understand them and we notate them and we know how to interject them back into the conversation, we're going to have a much higher chance of closing that person because we now know what's driving their decision, right? It's the emotion. Yeah, that's good. Man. So, that's good. You, you talked, you, you talked really quick there about uh, how to pivot, keep control of the conversation, move it where you want to go. That's one thing I, I also believe a lot in is, is in phone cells is the person in control, um, you know, not from a jerk standpoint, but just in control of the conversation is definitely going to get farther if you're able to keep control of it. And, you know, and it doesn't mean you have to talk a lot, right? Because you can, you can let them talk and them feel like they're dominating the conversation and they're sharing, which is what you want them to do, but you're able to just pivot and, and, and steer like you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and here's the thing, if you're in the sales game, you know, and I think that sometimes it gets painted negatively, the, the idea that we're salespeople and that we are doing certain techniques to, to try to control the conversation. Well, well, that's our job. Our job as the subject matter as experts is to control the conversation, is to make sure that we're going down the right avenue and not chasing a, a going down a bunch of rabbit holes. So I don't think there's any problem at all with with doing the right thing in terms of asking the con asking the questions necessary to steer them in the direction of providing the correct information for that consumer situation. Uh, so we do that exact same thing that you're talking about. Uh, Cody, you were probably actually the first person that taught us that. Um, you, you, you say it differently. Say it again. It's, it's ask. Yeah, yeah. Agree, answer, and ask. Yeah. Agree, answer, and ask. And so I also, it was, it was reinforced by a book called The Conversion Code that another buddy recommended. And they, in there, they call it acknowledge, respond, pivot, meaning the exact same thing, right? But it's so powerful because that's what needs to happen. Anytime somebody brings up an objection over the phone, you need to acknowledge their objection. You need to acknowledge that you're actively listening. You hear it. You respond to that objection with an answer, some hopefully that's been well rehearsed so that you have a good, a good way of controlling. And then you go ahead and pivot with asking another question that continues directing the conversation the way you want it to go. Yeah, you, you mentioned something too I want to I touch on. Um, I think it's valuable for most people. Is you talk, talk, touched on rehearsing it. Um, walk us through what you do with your team. Do you guys role play? Like, like walk us through how important it is to constantly be improving every day. Yeah, so before we started, if you guys follow Cody, which if you're watching this, you follow Cody, you know how he practices with his team in the mornings. And those games looked so fun that we started implementing them into our organization as well. And my team loves it. They love it because it, two things, it, it gets your mind sharp in the morning. If the first thing you do, you drink some caffeine, we get in a circle or we get in a line and we start going through these exercises, it starts making you think sharp. And then after that, the other or the second thing that I really love about it is the camaraderie because 
sometimes we'll say some off the wall stuff, you know, our objections or our, our pivotal question or whatever it is. We say some off the wall things, but it makes everyone laugh. And so now everyone's getting in a good mood. You got them endorphins flowing. So you're thinking sharply, you're laughing, you're enjoying being with your team and you look forward to every morning when you start doing that. So I think that that's probably one of the best things that, uh, that you've put out there, Cody, is how you start training with your teams in the morning. Because I know that if I'm adopting it, um, several other people are. I know Ramiz is doing the same thing. Uh, I've seen him you know, saying that he's going to do it with his team. And there's probably so many others that maybe I haven't told you yet, but they're probably doing it. It's fun. It's so fun. But we also, another thing that we practice, especially for any agents who want to use our scripts, um, you have to practice the scripts. I think especially with, uh, with us taking on doing Medicare Advantage as a call center, we actually have to, by force, we have to do scripting. We have to say things the way that the insurance carrier wants us to say it. So in order to come off smooth, you have to practice. So we'll spend a couple of days every, um, every week in the morning time practicing and going through the script so that we sound more natural as we're having to read through it. And the same thing with our Medicare supplement scripts. If people want to use those in our teams, they go through and practice it. And so we just go and practice with each other to talk about it, throw some crazy objections in the middle of it to see how, how they can recover from that objection and still stay on script. It's all so important to do to practice. Absolutely. That's good, man. Uh, what, what, what do you guys do from like a, uh, obviously that helps with an energy standpoint. How important is energy in, in, in a sales room, in a sales team? Like, you know what I mean? Just throughout the day. Oh my God. I mean, there's two things uh, that are that, that I think if anyone's had an, uh, an employee or, or someone part of your organization who was a negative Nelly, mm. you know how quickly that spreads like cancer. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable the effect that one person with a negative yeah. attitude can have on the rest of the team. It's not worth keeping them, is it? Not no matter, all. even if they're your best salesperson, it's not worth it, is it? It's, it's, it's just not because your best person who has a negative attitude, even if they're selling 50 apps is not going to make up for the other 10 people they're affecting who aren't reaching their potential because of it. It just won't work. And so I think one of the things that has happened, had to happen in my office, I've had to let people go who are, who are those negative Nellies, who are those cancers to the office because it was affecting my other teammates and I could see it. And as soon as I let them go, I'm, I, I'll give you the, the last person that I had to let go. And this, this is not something I revel in or enjoy. I, I hate having to let people go. I, I, can tell, I can tell you don't like it at all, man. I, I don't. I, yeah. I hate it. But as soon as I, I remember, it was Monday morning. I let them go. We were in the last week of a month. And I said, I, you know what? I was going to give them the rest of the week and then let them go on Friday. But Monday came and I just thought to myself as I sat in my office, why wouldn't I give the rest of my team the best chance at closing out the week strong? If I let this person go now, I bet you, you'll see that happen. And sure enough, we had one of our best weeks that week. I let that person go that Monday morning. She walked, I let the team know. And there was just this, this black cloud lifted. And all wow. of a sudden, everybody, everybody just started performing. And I was like, so amazed yeah, seeing yeah. that and saying, wow, that's just proof in the pudding that one negative Nelly can really affect you. So energy Oh my God, it's so important. It's so important in an environment. And so uh, we also try to keep motivation up. You know, I try to give a rah, rah speech in the morning to get everybody going. And we try to have good music playing throughout the, throughout the that day. Was, that, that, was my next, that was my next question. We adopted music and it is like freaking amazing how much it's helped. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. I love it because it helps to keep that, 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 that good momentum going. So sometimes all of a sudden some slow music will play or some music. I just, I listen to it. I'm like, I can't get into this, change it, no, you know? And so we, we immediately change it and put on something that's more high energy because you do need that high energy music to keep the, the, the mojo flowing, I guess. For sure. What, what about contest? What about like incentives and contest and like something to like, you know what I mean? What, what do you do there? Yeah, I love doing contests. So here, what I the contest I'm doing right now, for instance, we just rolled out some tweaks to a script that we were using. And because we've been practicing it, I basically said, look, the first person to sell five people, five different Medicare products on uh, using this script, you know, I'll throw, it'll give you a hundred bucks cash, you know? And so people love cash. That's the thing. Dude. Agents love cash. So if you can, it's one thing to throw it on your paycheck, you know, but if you can, yeah. if you can give it to them cash money, 
there, that incentive is, is awesome for agents. So, uh, yeah, I, I come up with stuff all the time. Uh, I've come up, I have a, a top dog award every month that I give to the top performing agent. And so we have, uh, there's a couple agents in here that had them lined up. And so everyone is chasing those guys and saying, I want to, I want to get more of those top dog awards. And, and they're like, they're little, they're just tiny little, uh, trophies that are the shape yeah. of a dog. So, wow. Uh, wow. I, I don't know if you saw them the last time you were here, but, uh, yeah, I'm always thinking about different contests. Uh, I'm thinking about also making a covered parking spot downstairs and that way I, you know, top, the top person for the month can also get the parking spot for the month. I always think of different ways to try to motivate these guys on top of their, the incentives they already have. Uh, we obviously have also a trip incentive that we give them as well. So uh, anybody who can qualify based on production um, this year, we're going to do an Alaskan cruise. So that's uh, you know, that's a, a huge incentive in itself. Yes. That's big, man. That's really big. That's really, really big. Uh, is there a, is there like an, uh, an opening, whatever you're comfortable sharing, is there like an opening line to go back to the script for a second and being in control is there like an opening line or an intro or something that you're okay sharing. I, I know that you release a lot of this in your Medicare sales university. Do you think you're, you're okay sharing as far as like staying in control and how a call should start and that kind of stuff? Yeah. And you know, what's funny is that there's two, there's two, there's two things, two different versions that, uh, that people like to do. Some of them like to just do a basic intro where they ask a question like, you know, how are you doing today? And I know that you're, you're, you know, in your training, I remember when you came and trained, you said it's probably better not to do that. And so I would say half our agents want to ask that question because when they go the other way, it doesn't work as well for them. And the reality okay. is we need to have that variety of scripting because every person's personality is different. And so, you know, what works for one may not work for the other. And so we like to have a variety. Um, I can actually, let me pull up one. True. That's good. Hold that's on good. real quick and I'll pull up one for you. I like that. Thank you, buddy. That's awesome. This is why the Medicare Hefe is a freaking influencer, bro. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so here's here's the intro where they do ask something. Basically, it's um, let's just say that I, I'm calling you. Hey, Cody, this is Eric with Medicare Sales University. How are you doing today? Good, hey, I'm man. glad to hear it. Um, listen, I'm following up with you regarding your inquiry for information about Medicare and Medicare supplement plans that are approved in your state. How can I help you out today? And then from Good. there, you just keep asking questions. So it's a simple introduction. Um, and so, you know, he's giving ask, it away. He's giving it away live on video. I love it. But, but it's, yes, if they ask a question in return, right. And they're just, you know, so you say, how can I help you out today? Well, I just, I, I, I inquired because I, I don't like that. I'm paying so much money and your ad online said that I, I, I could lower my rates. And then from there you just say, well, that's perfect. So I am calling in regards to your annual policy review for Medicare benefits. So you currently have a supplement in place or do you have a Medicare Advantage plan? And, and so you start asking questions to try to dig deep, figure out what they have, start and, and notate this information so that you can use it later on. But that's, that's the key here. Again, it's like we said, ask a lot of questions, open-ended questions. These aren't questions where they can answer yes or no. It's going to be questions where they have to answer with something. That's why I didn't say, do you have a Medicare supplement? And stop. I asked, do you have a Medicare supplement or do you have a Medicare Advantage plan? So they have to answer with one of those, right? Yeah. And so you just got to keep asking open-ended questions. Because if, yeah, because if, 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 if you say, do you have a Medicare supplement? No. You know what, what I mean? Do? Yeah. Okay. And then you go to the next question. They are now in control, you know? Yes. And, and when they answer with yes, no, it's like they're going to start trying to move you to a position where they're going to hang up the phone. Yes. Or they're going to say, just send me information. Just send me yeah. information. They're going to make something up. Yeah. And, and so that, that's a big thing that, you know, people like saying, just send me information. And our response is just send me information is, well, you know, ma'am, we're an electronic office. And so we can actually send you information via email, but we don't really have the paper materials that we send out when people want more information. So what I can do is let's go ahead and cover everything that we need to cover. Make sure that you're going in the right direction. And then I can send you an email to recap what we discussed today. What you did there is you just bought yourself some time to keep the conversation moving. Yep, yep. gives you more time to build that rapport, right? Because at the end of the day, rapport equals trust and trust means they're buying. People don't buy from you unless they trust you, but only way to trust you is you got to start building that rapport. You got to start really trying to, um, you know, relate to them. You have to be able to relate to them so that they feel like, oh, I like this Eric cat. I like him a lot. I think I want to do business with him. That's right. Dude, that's good, man. That, that's gold. Dude's dropping 
Not to steal Bradley's reference, but the dude's dropping bombs live on uh, insurance influencers, man. That's that's strong, buddy. Thank you. Uh, what what do you look for um, with 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 salespeople? Because you're hiring literally every day. Yeah. You're always trying to scale up. You know, we're hiring. I've got eight salespeople. I just decided this week I want to go to 40 salespeople. You know, why the heck not? Um, what do you look for when you're interviewing? What's some what's some stuff? You know, for because obviously you want someone that's coachable. You know. Yeah. I personally, so I like to train people from the ground up, right? I, not to say that I won't train somebody who uh, already has Medicare experience, but I find that it's just, just it, it's, it is, it's been easier for me to just bring in somebody who doesn't do it a different way already and show them the way that we do it so that I know that it's, it's easier to track progress that way. So, uh, unlicensed? It can be unlicensed. Sometimes what I, what I've done most of the time, to be honest, is I'll find somebody who has a license, but was in a different field, life insurance, for instance, uh, somebody who, who got a, the life health license and they just been focused on life or they were focused in property casualty, um, or, or some other line of insurance that's not Medicare. And then I'll bring them in that way. I need, at least I know that they've passed the insurance exam because that exam is pretty tough. Um, but from there I go put them through the paces of the university and get them trained up. So I also look for somebody who is fearless, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, this is a hard game, you know? The game we play is not an easy. I mean, you can get pitched all day long about people who are just going to different ways to advertise so that just the sales are lay down sales. Guys, if, if that was true, if it was possible, we need, and we wouldn't need salespeople, you know? No. We need order takers. We wouldn't have to pay the salaries we pay and the bonuses that we pay. Like we could just take order takers if it was really the case, but <clears throat> it's not, we need order takers. And so um, I look for people who are uh, aggressive in a good way, who aren't afraid of being hung up on, who know that this is a numbers game, who can understand at least that it's a numbers game and that they got to push through the no's to get to the yeses. That's a huge, huge thing. You can't be afraid of the phone and you can't be afraid to say what you have to say. So some of the things that we teach in order for us to keep these conversations going, they're not easy for the timid to say, you know, if you're, if you're scared to be, um, I w and again, I don't like using the word aggressive. It's not, it's not that we're right. being aggressive, but we're being to the point, yeah. right? If somebody is kind of trying to talk us through or, or talk us in circles, like we need to get to the point. And so there's certain questions we got to ask and there's certain things we got to do to keep an application moving forward that are going to be assertive and, some agents just, they struggle with that. It's hard for them. Do you do any type of, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking a super random question and you may not yet, but do you guys use any type of like a personality um, assessment test? I haven't yet, but you know what? When I, I heard somebody talking about that, it might've been Ramiz who was talking about it before. And I thought to myself, yeah, that'd be a good idea to do in the beginning for sure. It saves them a ton of time. I was at a I was actually at a retreat with Ramiz. It was a Coach Burt retreat. Matt Monero was there. He owns a hundred seventy million dollar company. Um, they hire based on so we we've, we we do the disc assessment in our office before we hire salespeople. They they Ramiz and this Matt Monero guy use the predictive index, and it tells you okay this person is you know aggressive or they're impatient or they're you know, um, patient or their attention to detail is good or like different things. So you can look at it and say, okay, this person um, is attention to detail sucks. So they shouldn't be doing quick, quick books, right? Or, or this person has a high ambition. They should be doing sales, you know? So it'll literally tell you those things and it's, it's unbelievable. It's really cool. Yeah, that sounds solid. And, and I, I absolutely wouldn't mind adopting something because it, it would greatly help. A lot of it me trying people. And I mean, I don't have a hundred percent track record on reading people. I mean, I'm not perfect. And so I've hired no, me neither. people that I'm just like, eh, that didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I've also hired superstars, you know? Totally. So we do a disc assessment and um, we only hire, they've got their leading letter has to be a D or an I, or, or we don't hire them. So if they're an S, they're good for service. If they're a higher, higher C, they're good for like computer or data entry. You know, if they're an I, they're like a networker, they're influential, they're like a, you know, social person. If they're a D, they're like impatient, direct, aggressive, high ambition. Yeah. Is there, is there, so have you ever run across somebody that's all four? Um, <laughs> Pretty even on all four? 
I've seen, I haven't personally seen it. Well, so, so for instance, my disc is I'm a hunt, it's a zero to a hundred. I'm a hundred on a D. I'm a 90 on the I, and then I'm lower on S and C. Okay. Um, I can still be service oriented. I just don't want to be, I can sit there and do computer work all day. I just don't want to be, you know, um, and that's They're, what it comes down to, right? It's more about your desire, not necessarily what you're capable of doing. It's what you desire to do because that's where you'll be, that's where you'll excel. Yeah. And, and where I made the mistake was with my own sales team was like, well, I need to hire a bunch of me's, you know, well, that's probably impossible. Number that's one. Pretty damn tough, like, man. You're, you're, you're pretty unique, brother. Thanks, buddy. Well, dude, you too, man. You know, and, and yeah, not to toot my horn, but it's like, you know, you should try that. That's why it start that test starts to separate people. Um, and it helps us hire the right people for the right roles. Um, yeah. so well, that's absolutely true. And, and that's, you know, if, if you want, because the question is that what I look for when I hire somebody, I, I used to do the same thing. I wanted to hire somebody that was just like me. I tried to look for a killer. I tried to look for somebody who didn't need to be micromanaged, somebody who you could just give a task and they're going to go and get it done. Uh, and not only get it done, but they're going to excel at it. It's so hard to do that. And it was a mistake on my on my end. And I remember I did say that at one of the conferences when I was on stage, I said, um, that was a mistake I had to learn early on. And so the way to rectify it is basically look for people. I have my metric of what I need, you know, in an agent. And I need to look for more of that and hire to that. I shouldn't be looking for me. I shouldn't be looking to hire more of me's. T -t totally, totally. I, I, I struggled with that for a while too. There, there's, I made... We both probably made a crap ton of mistakes, you know, managing people over the years. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm calling 2019 as the year of learning. 20, 2018, I was thinking big and taking risk. 2019, I'm, I'm learning a crap ton and making a ton of mistakes. And then 2020 is the year to just freaking blow it up, man. Uh, blow it up. And you'll still keep learning, you know, and that's the thing. You'll, you'll always be learning throughout every single year. And if you're not learning, you're not growing. Yep. You got yeah, it. That's and, part of it. It's part of growth is learning. Yeah, dude, that's one of the things I like about you the, the, so much is um, you're one of the most coachable people I've ever seen. Like you're always realizing you can learn more and that you can learn from anyone. Um, you're crazy humble. Like there's people in my life that say that I'm an extremely humble individual. You know, you're more humble than me. Um, <laughs> you're a humble guy, man. I love it. And again, I, I, that's why I, I love spending time with you. Um, I, I love spending time with you because – we we vibe on so many of the same wavelengths and uh and again one of the biggest things that that i remember saying from from the eight percent stage is that you need to hang out with more people like cody who they're not only gearing up to achieve some big things in their own life but they're happy they're actually happy for their other friends successes and yeah. they love seeing that and i love seeing that that's why i only want to surround my myself with people who will be happy for my success because in turn i'm always happy for theirs i'm not jealous of them you know dude there's a so uh, not to take this conversation negative but there are so many jealous people in our business yeah absolutely absolutely there is and you and know what if they're jealous now i can't imagine three years from now right <laughs> exactly and, and that but that's life you know and i always yeah. tell people that in in the end it doesn't matter how genuine you are and how kind you are and how giving you are. There'll still be people who don't like you and they won't have literally any good reason to, to not like you. They just, they're just jealous and there's nothing you can do about it. There yeah. isn't. So I always tell people, stay in your lane. Yeah. Don't, don't focus on the negativity. If there is negativity out there, if there are people that are talking bad about you, don't focus on it. You got to just focus on what you're doing every day. Yeah and just take one step at a time i love that i think that's one of the big things that salespeople struggle with is ego and pride and getting letting get in the way you know big time um what what, what, what how important is it for people in, in in the insurance industry to get around influencers power players like i know that when we get together freaking fireworks happen you know i mean like like then there's several people in this industry i just love being around how important is that i mean it's huge i i tell people all the time that when when you get around other people who have done some pretty awesome things mm -hmm. you get to know them a little bit and you realize they're not that different from me you know they just they just are good at taking action and yeah. that's where so many people struggle is that they want to consume 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 but they lack taking action and if you don't take action you're never moving towards your goal you're never moving towards progress 
you need action to take progress, right? And so I think that when you hang out with people, influencers, if you go to conferences and you see all these other people who actually are very much just like you, except that they take action, you start to realize that's the missing ingredient, action. And if they're doing it and they're motivating me to do it, then boom, I'm going to do it. You know how many people I got responses from? And it's so, it was so humbling to me because I didn't know that it would make that big of an impact. But when, when I recorded those ads live on stage, um, I had so many people respond to me and say, man, you really, uh, you really inspired me to just do it. I, I was afraid of getting on camera. And ever since seeing you do it right there on stage, I started doing it. And some of those guys, I mean, they're on social media all the time now. I see them in my feed all the time. And it's so awesome because that's what they, they, they saw that, hey, this guy, he's not much different from me. But he just did that on stage in front of 800 people, whatever. And now yeah, I'm yeah. doing it. Now I'm, yeah. why, why, why shouldn't I? Dude, I, I, I thought you messed up on purpose. <laughs> no. No. In fact, to me, the pressure was so high that I'm like, I feel like I'm probably going to mess up. I'm surprised since I did. So I filmed two ads. And I'm surprised the first one, I, I hit it on the nail, you know, but – the second one, I was just like, oh, can I do this again in front of everybody? Yeah. And yeah, I messed Dude, you up. You did it. Well, you know what? You showed that you're going to mess up and make mistakes along the way. But if you just focus on taking action and executing, good things will happen. You know, yeah. and, and uh, you showed you were very vulnerable. And I people people appreciate that. That's something I struggle with. My personality is being vulnerable in front of people because I want to like be perfect. Yeah. But dude, I loved that. And the crowd loved it too. Oh, I, I really, I really, um, I, I had such a blast, man. That was, that was fun. And again, my biggest thing is I love to give value. I love to, to really share with people insights and things that I've, that I know work because I practice this, right. I'm doing it. And so uh, if I can help others to, to even have an inkling, if I had an inkling of help and helping them succeed, it's a high for me. And I know that's the same way you are. You know, that's why you do everything that you do because you know, it's helping people. And that's, that's what's feeding us. You know, it's feeding us. It's not, it's not the fame, right? It's not that we want to be known by people. It's that we're helping people and we know that they're doing better in life because of the little bit that we were able to share with them. Exactly. And the last question for insurance influencers that relates specifically to that, what made you want to be an influencer? It's just that I, I think that earlier on in my career, when I saw, when I f helped my first agent get to six figures, that was an amazing feeling, you know, because when you, when you, when you start to make money as your, as your own agency, I mean, it's pretty awesome. But when you get to that six figure level, like that's that, that's that first notch in the belt, right? That you're just like, man, you feel good seeing that check coming in, knowing that you have a lot more things that you can do in life now. You have a lot more options in life because you put that hustle and then and that hustle's paying off. And so when I, when I got that taste, I wanted to do more of it. So I started doing more of it. And when I started putting things on an online platform, knowing that it could reach more than what I was reaching before, that's when it just took off for me. That's when I said, I, I want to help the masses. You know, That's any good, way I man. can, I want to help the masses well, because it just feels good. You, you say that, um, dude, our YouTube channel is, is we're trying to get it to the masses. Um, what can the masses that are going to watch this do if they want to talk to you after, you know, or just want to reach out or follow you or whatever? Yeah, you can, um, you can go to Medicare Sales University. I have uh, my, my email listed on there. If you have questions, you can also uh, find me on, on uh, Facebook as well. And you can go to Medicare Sales University on Facebook and you can instant message me. I, I try to respond to as many people as I can, whether they're friends with me or not, and, uh, and try to answer questions, try to get them going in the right direction, trying to you know, show them what's, what's possible out there. And so I've been able to help uh, lots and lots of people so far just with the university platform. Uh, and, and, and I still got a lot of great things planned for the university that are helping agents. So uh, that's, that's the best way they could reach me probably is through either Facebook, sending me an email, hitting me up on Instagram, any of the outlets, uh, reach out, reach out and I'll, I'll definitely respond. I love it, buddy. Mr. Eric Fierro, the Medicare boss or Hefe, founder of Medicare Sales University and runs a Medicare call center out of Phoenix. Dude, I love being around you. Thank you so much for your time during a super busy AEP where you guys are going to put up a couple thousand freaking policies, bro. 
Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work hard, man. We're really grinding. So, I said, uh, hats off to all the agents that are part of our organization. You know, they're they're the backbone of everything. They they work hard, and and we really just want to see how you know amazing things happen for them too. Because if if they're winning, we're winning. That's the bottom line. Exactly, dude. Thank you for being on, man. Appreciate it very much. I appreciate you, Cody. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching another episode of Insurance Influencers. We bring in some freaking power players and influencers that are helping our industry so that they can help you as well. If you want to be on the show, reach out to Andy at CodyAskins.com. Thanks, Eric.